Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to my new mod. Well, it's, it's more like a version 2 of an old mod. Uh, some of you might remember uh, the pack-up bag from back in the day. Uh, this is uh, my version of a pack-up bag, and I use it specifically for RPGs when I GM over Tabletop Simulator. It allows you to create you know, dynamic maps and all this kind of stuff. And I'll show you how it works. The old mod had this confusing demo that I set up, it was causing a lot of problems, uh, and I had to rewrite it for my Arkham mod. So I thought I'd upload just the, the new version. So now when you load the mod in version two, you get this, just three dispensers, nice and simple. You have a version with a box, a version with a bag, and a version with a smaller box. And these can be scaled, you know, or shrunk. It doesn't really make a difference. Sorry, my phone is going crazy. I really should find out what work wants. But I'm gonna finish this video first, damn it. <laughs> so basically, if you're using a box, you can right click on it and go custom and copy the diffuse image. This, These are just the boxes from my box mod, which you can find on the workshop. Uh, it's uh, this one here, tool, tragic game boxes. There's a lot of really great box mods, like crates and boxes and more boxes and stuff. But these are just the ones from tragic boxes. So you can copy that diffuse image and paste it into your browser and you'll get the template. Now this is a distortion free template you can just drop your images into these areas and they'll map perfectly to the box. Scale the image as big or as small as you like. Just make sure it's uh, the same aspect ratio. Anyway, so that is how the mod looks when it's loaded up. Okay, so I had a bit of an interruption. I'm back. Uh, can't really remember what I was saying. Uh, anyway, the, the boxes are these. Let's load up a demoed scene and show you how it functions. So this is just a blank scene, nothing fancy. I'm just gonna go into the components and I'm gonna pull out a chessboard, like so. And let's just put out some chess pieces as well. Okay, so we've got our chessboard set up. Now, the way you get the bags into your mod is that you just right, uh, right click on the mod. So you'd go to workshop, but I'm just gonna to go to the, here, there's the three little dots. Click on that and click on search and then you can just drag any of the bags out. Let's get the infinite dispenser for the bag version. Just drag that out like so. And let's just save this and uh, get into it. Uh, actually, let's get rid of that. Okay, so here's our demo scene we've set up. We've just spawned some objects and we've spawned the bag. Now, nothing will happen but if you right click on the bag and go to scripting, scripting editor, you will see the actual code for the mod. Now, all the options that I've set up for people to use are at the top. It, where it says do not edit below this line means just that. You don't need to edit anything below there. You should never edit it unless you know what you're doing. But these switches are actually quite simple to use, or I think they are, and hopefully they'll be easy to use. The first one is called additive equals true. This just means that the bag will find new objects. If you set that to false, whatever's in the bag will be frozen. We'll talk about that later. The second one is use bag GM notes button as name, right? Which you can have true or false. So if I have this, oops, if I have this, uh, set to false. I don't know why it's jumping down like that, it's really annoying. If I set that to true, and go save and play, and I change the GM note to, this is a bag name, copy and paste it, you can see that it rewrites it and you can even you can even use uh you know this is a bag name so i can even put like 
breaks. You know what I mean? It kind of, and it sort of rebuilds the button for you a little bit, but you might have some errors with that. So if you're just in the scripting editor at the same spot where it has uh, the use bag notes, use the GM notes for the button, you can change the width here just to, you know, tweak it a little. But let's just put that back to false and use the uh, the default, which is just place. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, oh, by the way, to get into GM notes, you have to be the black player. Okay, so when you right click, you have a new options, GM notes, so GM here, and that's not only visible to the GM. Anyway, back to the scripting editor. The next one down is really cool. Uh, restrict button by host set to true by default. And what that means is that these pack up bags will not be clickable by any other person at the table except the host. And this creates a way of ensuring that people don't accidentally click on them or malicious people don't click on them. And uh, it just makes the, the mod a little safer to use. But you can also, if you prefer, uh, set this to false and put in restrict by color. So I could change nil here to say red. Okay, and if I now save and play, and I try and click on a button, it'll have an error message pop up, button restricted to the red player only. And this is so you can have pack up bags for individual players for their play areas. You know, you can do all sorts of things like, uh, you know, in in games that have to reset the, the table and you've got to pick up items, you can just make a pack up bag and just click it and it'll just draw everything in. So that's, uh, that's to restrict it by player color. Okay. But I'm just going to leave that as, uh, I'm just going to leave that as true and leave this as nil. So it's restricted by host. Now you have in this thing here, this section here is all the switches that control how the, the pack up list is created. And it's pretty simple. You have an ignore list and you can ignore by type. You can ignore by name. You can ignore by description. You can ignore by GUI or you can ignore by tag. And anything that you add into this area will be ignored. Okay. And you can also go force GUI, uh, force by GUID, which means that anything with the GUID that you specify in that section will be valid. Okay. For the, the thing. But it will also, if you like, and this is how the bag was originally designed. It can use scripting zones. So I'll show you how the scripting zone thing works. Basically, if I just draw a scripting zone over here, and as it says in the bag, uh, you need to name it pack up zone and then the bag name, right? So if I just go, boom, pack up note, then the bag name. And now I name this into the GM note as pack up zone demo bag. And you'll note it's not case sensitive. So I've written demo space bag, but the name of the actual bag is uh, demo bag all in caps. Okay, but now that it has the correctly named zone, so that zone is now associated with that bag, if I hit the pack up button, oh, I've uh, still got to save the, save the script edit I did to allow me to use the, the button. Okay, so let's try that again. So if you draw the, draw, draw out the, the script zone, we'll just right click it in the GM type this, and then we'll paste that in, and then we'll type in demo bag. 
And now let's just let's just save this. And now if I hit pack up, it actually packs up the whole thing and I can place it all out. And that's basically the way the entire thing works. You'll notice that it retained what was, uh, you know, frozen or what wasn't. Now, the way the ignore lists work is, let's just have a look back at the ignore lists. You can ignore by type. So for example, if you wanted to pack up a player area, but you wanted to ignore all cards or all decks, you can just type in the types here. You can get a list of all the types in Tabletop Simulator from their website, uh, but a common one is deck or card or bag. So for example, if I put into here deck, put it inside co uh, commas, and then put it inside, uh, you know, quotation marks and card, those types will be ignored, okay? And I can also put an exact name. So I could put in here, ignore by name, ignore red, and these have to be exact. And I could put into an ignore by description, ignore, ignore, blue okay so if i i've done i've put ignore by deck ignore by card ignore red and ignore blue and just the names and descriptions so now if i just go to components cards i pull out a standard deck and i pull out a random card these will not pack up because they've been ignored see what i mean But what I could also do, because I don't want that table going anywhere, let's save this. Uh, my phone, I could get the GUID. And you get the GUID by right clicking. I've right clicked on the board. I go scripting, GUID. Then I right click on the bag, scripting, script editor. And I could just come down here and go ignore my GUID, save and play. Now when I hit pack up, it'll ignore the board. Okay. And this is really, really handy, especially when you use, you know, tags and stuff, because you can you can set it up so you can have, you know, your RPG map with your whole town. You can have monsters spawning and stuff, but anything that's not persistent, like, you know, people that just come and go, when you pack up, it'll be ignored. You know what I mean? Uh, but if I go back into the scripting editor, you can see that you can also ignore by tag. So anything with the tag pack up bag item ignore will be ignored. Okay. So if I just go, if I just copy that, let's grab a component. Let's grab a metal ball. Let's make that a little bigger so we can actually see it. Now, at the moment, if I hit the pack up, let's just save this. If I hit pack up, it'll take that ball, right? But if I right click on that and I go tags, the, the pack up, the, the tag is already here, so we can click it, but otherwise you just paste it, you know, you put it into there and you hit the plus button. So if I tag that with the pack up item demo bag ignore, and now I do pack up, the ball will be left in place. Okay. Now I've got a mod that does, that handles mass tagging. I'll probably upload that as well. It's good to use tags. That is how the ignore list works. Okay. I mean, it's very, very simple. You just ignore by type, 
ignore by name. Oh, I'll show you the ignore by names and descriptions. I forgot to show you that. So if I just grab a red and a blue, and if I save this, if I hit pack up, it gets packed up. But if I name them as the same as I named them in the ignore list, so it is, uh, this was description, I think it was, ignore blue, and this was ignore red. And now I do pack up, they'll be ignored. Okay, so that is how the, uh, That's how the ignore list functions. Okay, so I've just cleared the board of a little rubbish to make it a little bit easier to see. Let's go back in the scripting editor. So that's the ignore list. So just to recap, you can ignore by type, like card, deck, bag, tile, whatever. You can ignore by name, you can ignore by description. You can ignore by GUI, but you can also ignore by the tag ignore, okay? But you also have force GUID, okay? So if I, if I load up, say, these things, we want to keep these counters, but they're not inside the script zone. So if I go, to, if I go here, you can see they're not inside the script zone. Oops, wrong button. So if I go, let me just say this. If I do pack up now, it just takes the pieces. So what I can do is I can right click, I can get the, the GUI of this. I can go into the script. And I can, uh, let's ignore, where is it? Force, it's up here. I can just go bam, bam, bam. Let's get the other one, right click, scripting, bunk, and paste that in. And now I can go save and play. And these will be forced to uh, be packed up, even if they're outside of the scripting zone. Phone's still beeping madly. And of course, you can use tags for this as well. So if I go to, let's just go to, where is it? Components, oh God. Components, let's grab a metal chest piece. Let's get the rook. Let's make it nice and huge. It's outside the script zone. If I right click that and go to tags, the tags were already here, but you can just add them by pressing plus, it's just, pack up item to identify it as a pack item. And then demo bag is the name of the bag that it gets packed into. So I just turn on that tag and I can now pack up from outside the script zone. Now, what is cool is that, did you see how it sort of, it picked things up by tag? Once you have packed something up, right? So let's, let's just get rid of these. Once you have packed something up, let's just save this as demo two. I can actually just delete the script zone completely because as I packed up, it tagged everything as the, you know, with the, with the pack up tag. So I can now place and pack up without having any script zones in my mod at all. So when I'm doing my RPG tables, for example, I have a sort of cut down version of the table that I do to set up and I can set up big, really fancy dungeons and stuff. I can pack them up and then I can just import the bag by itself into a new area, into the actual play area and use it without having to have scripting zones all over the place. Because every single item, if I just place them, has been tagged automatically with the 
pack up item tag that allows it to use. So that's pretty cool. Also, if we go into the scripting editor, you have this button called additive, and this is why I made this version of my of the of the pack up bag because I wanted to have a way of having a pack up bag but have it remember your changes. So say I'm in a dungeon and they you know open some chests, they knock down a wall, they find a secret passage that they open or whatever. If they leave the dungeon, I can pack up the bag and all those changes are saved. And you just do that by had additive equal to true. And remember, I don't even have the script zone anymore because the script zone I deleted, right? So if I now make changes to my board and then pack it up and then I place it back out, it remembers those changes. You know what I mean? Now, if I add new items to the board, it won't remember them. Like, so if I go, if I add a, 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 you know, some squares, these will not be packed up. Okay. So it allows you to have non persistent spawning things that like disappear next time you load the dungeon up. Okay. But if you do use, you can, of course, tag them, you know, and then they will be packed up. Right. So if I now place, and then I now pack up, it now takes that. Or if I just load up the version that still had the scripting zone, uh, this is the version with the scripting zone still active. You can, uh, any anything you add to the uh, play area, to the scripting area, will also be, uh, you know, saved. So now I've got pack up, it'll pack up anything inside the scripting zone. And that's, you know, permanent, you know, and this is, again, this is additive. So if I pack up now and then I put it back, it remembers things. And that allows you, that allows you to very quickly add things to your map that are permanently added. You know what I mean? Like say, Someone dies and you want to add a gravestone to the village. You can just drag out a gravestone, boom, next, pack it up the village. Next time you open the village, that gravestone is still there. And uh, remember, if I, if I just place the, the chest set, I can just drop something in without, without having a script zone. So there's no script zone in here. Uh, actually, there is. Hang on. Uh, Demo two, was it? Oh, demo two, I have to delete the script zone. <laughs> so there's no script zone. I just deleted the script zone. If I now place that, right, I can just drag in a not any object, but to add it to the bag, I just need to right click on it, go to tags and just tag it with the pack up item tag like that. And now when I pack up, it'll be added. And remember, it is additive. So if I make any changes, they are remembered. Okay, and because we're no longer using the script zone, it doesn't matter where they are in the game world. I can pack them up in an additive manner. Now, uh, if I just load up the demo zone again, let's place the, uh, let's place these out. What you can also do is using the script zones, you can actually have multiple script zones. So I can have another script zone over here, right? I just tag it with the same tag doesn't even matter if these script zones overlap and uh, if I put a bunch of stuff inside that other script zone right I can actually then 
just do pack up and it packs them up as well and tags them. So you can have multiple script zones all over the, all over the map as well if you, to do pack ups. So for example, in one of my, uh, maps, I had a pack up bag to open the map of this castle layout. And then once the players triggered an alarm, I had another pack up bag that would just output soldiers all over the, or, you know, like output guards all over the place. And I did that by having multiple script zones when I did the setup. So that's pretty much, uh, is there anything else? Let me, let me just think. Oh, of course. <laughs> so, uh, what you can do is you can right click and go to the scripting and just turn additive off. Okay. So if I come here and I go additive false and then save and play. Now, when I place things, it doesn't matter what I do, right? It'll still pack up, but the next time I place, it'll place it where it was originally done. It's no longer remembering the changes. You know, you can't add to the bag. And this way you can make set bags, much more like a, a traditional pack up bag. This is very good for, uh, games like say Tash Kalar or whatever, where you have resetting gameplay like or chess, for example. So I could play a whole game of chess, you know, take some pieces. We've done all our moves and then they go, well, game two. So we can just go pack up and then we can go place and start a new game. And that is pretty much how the pack up bag works. Uh, it's a, uh, just to very quickly recap, you have additive true or additive false. The first time you use it, you always need to have additive true, but then afterwards you can make it additive false and then it will no longer recognize new objects or changes to objects. You can use the GM note of the bag itself to label the button automatically and you can adjust some width parameters in this here. You can also restrict the button access to the host only with restrict host button, or you can make that false and restrict buttons by color. Okay. Then you can use scripting zones to control what's selected. You can use scripting zones. You can have as many scripting zones as you like. They can overlap the same scripting zone can touch the same object. It'll still only, you know, it's smart enough to work out that, you know, that object's been selected twice. And you can force objects using the force GUID by just typing in the GUID and that'll force them to be in it. Then you have the ignore list. You can ignore by type, deck, card. You can ignore by name. You can ignore by description. Or you can ignore by GUID. Or you can simply add the dash ignore tag to the pack up item tag. Okay. And that's pretty much the mod. If I start a new, if I go to an, you know, a new, uh, a new table. How do I do that? Main menu. So I just start a new table. Oop. Let's go. Tables. Boom. I can just go object. Uh, I can just go open. Gee, why is that? So low res all of a sudden. Uh, if I go search into the demo I just did and grab the bag. So this is a completely unrelated scene. Oh wait, I didn't actually save it. So let's go back to demo two. Uh, no, demo two, yeah, search. If I grab the demo bag, Remember, this is a completely new scene. I've just imported it. And of course, it'll still remember where everything's been placed. Okay. And that way you can just create huge, big clickable bags to put out and change items. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. 
Okay, well that's the that's the new pack up bag. I hope you guys like it, and I'll see you guys next time.